Being emotionally boundaryless is particularly dangerous because covert narcissists will easily emotionally manipulate you to do anything, to tolerate everything. For example, they'll use an emotional sob story to hook you in emotionally, to make you feel obligated or guilty to take responsibility. So being emotionally boundaryless puts you at a high risk of being exploited. You must first identify what your emotions are, how you feel about things. You need to clarify what emotions belong to you and what emotions don't. And this is extremely challenging if you've been in a long-term relationship with someone in cluster B who used emotional manipulation as a way to control you. Setting emotional boundaries protects you. It preserves your energy, your time. You're not meant to be at the beck and call of everyone else's emotional dramas. You need to carefully discern where your limits are or you risk emotional burnout and compassion fatigue. Your beautiful gift of having such a big heart can begin to feel like a curse. And if you believe that your loving, caring nature, your ability to emotionally connect is a bad thing, it's an indication that you need to look into the topic of emotional boundaries because it'll help you preserve your gift instead of feeling burdened by it. To be emotionally boundaryless means to have no boundaries with your emotions. I think of someone who is always nice, who's always available 24 seven, who has no limit to what they'll take on and bear, who feels super responsible for everyone's emotional state, for the emotional climate of their dysfunctional family. They may suffer anxiety and lose sleep, wondering whether they've hurt anyone's feelings and believes it's their responsibility to make the whole world happy. People who have no emotional boundaries will basically allow others to emotionally dump all their unresolved issues onto them. Indiscriminately vent, endlessly discharge their emotions. They may feel that they are everyone's therapist. And they may hear comments like, oh, I feel so much better after talking to you. Yet they're the ones who feel utterly depleted. And that's actually an example of two people who don't have emotional boundaries. And particularly if we've grown up in dysfunctional families, enmeshed with narcissists, controlling personalities, we truly lose touch with what our emotions are. There's going to be a lot of inappropriate expression or there may be chronic repression of our emotions. Clarifying our emotions or even knowing where our emotional boundaries are becomes almost impossible when, for example, when you feel envy or hatred directed at you, but the narcissist convinces you that this is love or it's an act of care. So please don't judge yourself for not knowing. We couldn't possibly have learnt proper emotional boundaries from people who themselves had no emotional boundaries. But taking the time to educate yourself about this topic will have huge payoffs because it'll benefit all areas of your life. Setting limits with abusive and controlling people whose aim is to keep you emotionally dysregulated will be one of the most difficult things you've probably ever had to do, but it's an absolutely essential part of healing and reclaiming your life. Choosing to go no contact is a boundary. It means you respect yourself. When you have no boundaries regarding your emotions, you make yourself vulnerable to emotional predators who will exploit you emotionally and in other ways. And the only person who can put a stop to that is you by first identifying if this is an important area that you may need to work on. So I'll give you some really great insights in this video to help you clarify this issue. And maintaining emotional boundaries is always going to be a work in progress. You can first define your emotional boundaries, but then life will cause you to need to redefine your emotional boundaries. I've recently had to set firmer boundaries to preserve my emotional energy. So I'm able to focus on the things that matter to me most. 
boundaries are basically limits that we set. They are thresholds that we've reached. A boundary is where we've drawn the line. They define who we are and who we are not, which emotions are ours and which emotions are that of another person. So being emotionally boundaryless also means when we're fused, when we're enmeshed, when we feel engulfed, when we feel overwhelmed or depleted. In crazy making relationships, the gaslighting that we endure leads to such debilitating confusion and self-doubt that we must learn or regain our emotional clarity to the point that we know our truth without a shadow of a doubt. What your emotions are, how you truly feel, becomes an act of self-preservation in these dysfunctional relationships because emotions are our messengers. They communicate what's right for us, what's wrong. And that's why emotional manipulation is so damaging. And how much validation you seek from others is a good way to measure where you're at. Because narcissists make us doubt our reality. They're master manipulators. They deceive us to confuse truth with lies. We're accustomed to seeking permission, looking for validation. And when I think of what the word invalidate means, invalidate our emotions, invalidate our reality. To invalidate someone is to cause them to be invalid, to make them an invalid, an emotional cripple, unable to do anything for themselves, to make them believe they are dependent on someone else. Emotional invalidation is extremely crippling. So to be able to validate your own emotions will help you to remain calm and allow you to manage your emotions more effectively. Every human has the right to feel, express and share their emotions. We're not objects, but to narcissists, we are. And particularly in childhood, that chronic invalidation is traumatic and it creates emotional distance. So when someone repeatedly invalidates your emotions, a part of us that makes us human is being denied. So that brings me back to knowing where your emotional boundaries are. If someone tells you how you are feeling, how you should or should not be feeling, how your emotions are wrong, if this was your repeated experience, the reason that makes you so angry is because your internal radar is letting you know they're violating your emotional boundary, your emotional body. They're dictating a sacred area that belongs only to you. For example, narcissists will often accuse you of having anger issues, so you feel guilty or ashamed of having feelings of this intense anger. Yet this is a positive emotion in a dysfunctional situation because anger is the alarm that rings to inform you you've had enough, you can't tolerate anymore, you're emotionally unable to tolerate any more violations on your emotional body. Emotional abusers will tell you your anger is bad, but their anger is justified. You don't have a right to express or feel anger, but you're meant to be at the brunt of their anger the entire time. And this causes a lot of emotional trauma. We fear emotions that are very appropriate, that could be trying to save your sanity. So please don't judge your emotions or label them as negative or become hyper positive or avoidant of what you have labeled as a negative emotion but instead become more curious about your emotions. Sit with what arises within you and process and integrate because all of that is part of emotional healing and defining what your emotional boundaries are. Please know that for most of us, emotional boundaries are like entering a foreign country because we may have had to survive in a dysfunctional family with a narcissistic parent. To have no emotions or to be constantly nice or helpful or never feel anger, it was how we felt valued, how we stayed safe by agreeing, keeping quiet, keeping the peace, becoming invisible, having no emotional boundaries, accepting when the narcissist said we should be happy, disregarding how violated, terrified or hurt we felt. So emotional boundaries were a foreign galaxy to us. And anyone who's lived with a narcissist knows there's always some sort of severe punishment for saying no, for expressing an emotion, for not complying. 
So please don't judge yourself too harshly for this. You survived an impossible situation. You know, we often stood virtually no chance in the face of an entitled, raging caregiver. So complying meant survival. And unfortunately, many of us numbed out our emotions. We're now adults who don't know what our emotions are. We may have moments of emotionally thawing out where we feel some sort of intense grief or rage, which we need help with. We need support and loving guidance with. And many of us have put up walls because the emotional pain that we existed in was too great to bear. So delving deeper into what emotional boundaries are is a big issue. And I can't overemphasize the importance of body-based therapies. I'm so appreciative of the help that I received from chiropractors, yoga instructors, somatic therapists that helped me reconnect to my body because I had disassociated from the emotional trauma. I was scared to be in my body. So they facilitated in me trusting my body, guiding me to feel safe again and being able to access my emotions. Boundaries establish the rules of engagement and emotional boundaries establish a safe place for you to feel your emotions. If people criticize you, endlessly complain, are rude to you, they intrude on you, they make demands, you're always there for them emotionally, but they're never there for you. Well, then it's up to you to maintain your emotional well-being by setting a limit or distancing yourself with that person. You also need to know what to share with whom. You don't share details of your life, how you feel, your thoughts, with people who you know will use that to exploit you or intimidate you or manipulate you. Some examples of setting an emotional boundary could be just with a warning, like, I don't appreciate you speaking to me that way. I don't want to discuss that topic either with you or right now. And boundary setting can even escalate to something even more firmer, such as hanging up the phone or walking away. If you're repeatedly not being heard, you may have to disconnect with that person. Always remember that you teach people how to treat you. If you feel uncomfortable or if you feel a subject is inappropriate, you need to say so because that is your responsibility. So some good signs that you have healthy emotional boundaries include you no longer feel responsible for fixing someone else's problems or instantly trying to ease their discomfort. You recognize and respect that that is their personal experience to process and integrate. And you're also able to hold space for a person. And that includes holding space for yourself, being present for your emotions. You may notice when someone is using guilt to motivate you to do something or not do something and you're okay with saying no. You're just not as easily guilt tripped as you were before. Another sign is you don't take offense to another person's comments. So you don't take things personally because you know what your emotions are, what's yours and what isn't. Another great sign of having healthy emotional boundaries is that you are becoming less emotionally reactive. So you can listen to another person and allow them to have their emotions without it triggering an emotion within you. Or perhaps you notice that it does trigger you but you choose not to participate any further. So no longer being affected by the emotional climate of another person. So setting emotional boundaries is essential for you to become an empowered individual, for you to no longer be fused or dependent on the moods or strong opinions of others. Having healthy emotional boundaries will allow you to be free to be you. You'll no longer fear the other person's response. And you trust that you will be emotionally okay, regardless of whatever chaos that another person may be trying to initiate. And the ability to master this skill demonstrates that we have self-respect. And emotional manipulators will know they can no longer mess with you, guilt trip you, shame you to motivate you to do something. Because all of those emotional tactics, those hooks, the way they emotionally bait you is just not going to work anymore. So good boundaries will free you. They will help you strengthen your connection to yourself so you never lose yourself in someone else's drama.